Uh, today we have a super special, for me, very, very, very special an interview with John Sanford. He is my friend, my mentor. Um, if you go back to the episode with the 15 seconds of uh, bravery, this is the person I was talking about. Uh, John is has done it all. She He's an illustrator. He was an art director for Cricket Magazine. He has been an author, illustrator. Uh, his his work is amazing, but more than anything, he is the most humble, gentle person, super encouraging. It is always a joy to talk to him or to talk with him. Um, so yeah, that's who we have today, John Sanford. Uh, he is, uh, and his latest book is uh, Brindle Fox coming out on August 22nd. He also is the author of Oak Leaf, author and illustrator of Oak Leaf. I mean, th th his illustrations are just gorgeous. Yeah, they're beautiful. Oh my gosh, breathtaking. Yeah, so that's what we have today. Yeah. Okay. But okay. I was telling I her, wait until you meet him because he is the most generous and kind person that I have ever met. And even though you have all this experience, all these books, you've been an art director, you've been everywhere. You're like, you're an artist and you love to talk shop. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that. Oh, oh yeah. I, I see myself as a uh, cheerleader for this business and I I think that there's there's lots of room for everybody, and how everyone tells a story. And uh, if somebody brings something really different from another from another world, there should be room for them. Uh, you know, it it all takes work, but um, I I think there's room for all the different wrinkles and different ways of storytelling. That's the fun of it. That is so true. That. Um... I, I don't know if you have listened to all the episodes, but there's one episode where I talk about the 15 seconds of bravery. And that is my story of how I met you. Oh. <laughs> because I was, I'm, I'm very anxious. And I went to the conference where I met you. And you stood next to me and I re I, I, I felt the presence sitting next, you know, standing next to me. And now I'm, I'm one of these people that just kind of like blends in the background and try to be like a flower on the wall. <laughs> And I was like, this is ridiculous. I'm just going to turn around and say hello. And I turned around and I said, hello. And I asked you, are you an artist or a, you know, an, an author or an illustrator? And you said both. And I didn't know that you were the person I was there to see. I had actually signed up for a critique with you. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I said, like, I, and after, after I, I, we met, you have become my mentor. You have become my friend. And like you said, the greatest cheerleader. And I am very grateful because you believed in my work before I could even believe in that. I'm like, I could possibly do this. So 15 seconds of bravery can change your life. <laughs> now that's a, is that a, a meme? Is that something that exists? Cause I've never heard that before, but I think it's pretty true. I think there is something to it that you only need to be brave for 15 seconds. But it is true. It only took 15 seconds to make the decision to turn around and say hi to someone. Well, that's that's great. And you have uh, excellent taste so, uh, <laughs> and some sort of Olga radar. So. <laughs> I think so. I just felt like this is a person you need to know. <laughs> <laughs> great. Well, I'm, I'm glad for that, that uh, bravery there. Yes, thank you. Um, um, so Sunny missed meeting you because she didn't go to that conference. But after that, you even encouraged us to to make a critique group and sort of like you like to guide artists. Um, well, be a mentor. It, uh, I found that those conferences are valuable because uh, there's a lot of people who. Uh, you know, artists, I think, just naturally are uh, stay in the background, uh, you know, for mm -hmm. for many reasons. And um, I, I I think we talked about Raheli uh, Jamapur Bell. I met her the same way at the end of a conference because she didn't, she never came forward. And she was the last one there. And I, I and so there was no one else to talk to. And we talked and she showed me her stuff. And, you know, the the same thing. She she uh, 
did work for our, when I was working at the magazines and uh, she just, you know, blew the issues apart. She just did so much to uh, make these stories special. And, you know, it was the first time she'd been published in the States. Mm -hmm. And uh, from there, she took these things and, and found an agent and she's just blasted off. She has books coming out all the time. And, uh, but the thing is, you, you never know uh, who, who is in the room and who has these uh, crazy ideas. Uh, and that's the fun of it, uh, to see what happens. And if you, can, if you can help in any little way, you know, point somebody that direction, that's easy enough. And, uh, I, and I hope everybody else just passes it along. Uh, Absolutely. We, yeah. We're all encouraged by uh, someone along the way, and that's that's important. Yes, I I, I agree with that. It, it, uh, we do say is like you can't do this alone. You need you need someone at least at least someone to believe in you, and like you said, guide you and just point you in the right direction. And you've been there. You've done it all. You have done. Um, you have been on both sides on all sides now. You have been an art director, an illustrator, I should say in that order, right? An illustrator, an art director, and now an author illustrator. So you have been the gatekeeper and on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you want to talk a little bit about your time in Cricket Magazine? Uh, because we, since we have illustrators, it's sort of like, we would love to hear how you made the decisions and who to hire or what, what in a portfolio kind of would stop you and say, this is the person I want to hire? Um, well, uh, I, I'd say it's sort of dependent on the story. And we had some wildly different stories there among the magazines. And there are some people that, um, that might fit a story. And then there's other people who might be so different that you'd never think they'd be right for this story. But it's a bit of a chemistry uh, to put people together with these, uh, with the magazines, with the stories. And the stories at Cricket could be, a uh, Cricket uh, Media Group, that's the, the title for the, the place. Um, the magazines are either literature, like Cricket Magazine and Ladybug, or they're science for kids. And, um, and so it kind of breaks that way. There are some people that, that are better with dreamier uh, conceptual things for lit literature. And then uh, for the science, you have to be pretty clear with nonfiction stuff, unless you get a playful article. And uh, that, that can be fun. You can, you can find someone to uh, run with things, but... Uh, my, my point of view comes from uh, art directors that I'd worked with, uh, well, for many years, for many decades, and the way that they would assign stories, uh, well, they'd, they'd have to get to know you to know what your capabilities are and your, your range. Um, but really, the... Um, the, the component of finished art and style was less important to these guys than, uh, than concept and how you thought about things. Oh. And so they would give a story and they tell, tell me and others how much room is available and uh, where the flexibility was. You can do two half pages or maybe a, a spread that goes across the top of the spread. Um, and, uh, and we need pencils in a week and no further directions, nothing, nothing spelled out because they respected us as storytellers mm -hmm. and that you might find a unique way of uh, telling this story that's th than what was in their head. Now... Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I have to say, in my uh, 16 years there, 
I was only disappointed uh, twice out of, you know, I'd say maybe 150 different stories. Everybody came through. Everybody nailed it and surprised me and made me look smarter than I was because they brought their their point of view and they surprised me uh, because I can't think like somebody else. I can yeah. try, but I can't. So that if I had done what some art directors do in drawing the thing up or saying, we want the, this woman on the left here telling this person this. And, uh, and over here, we want a coffee cup right there because that matters in the story. It's, that's not storytelling. That's, right. uh, that's a cut and paste. Uh, and uh, it, it's also really frustrating. There's, there's just nothing to do but uh, be a risk for the art director. And, um, but to give someone the rope to run with it, um, I mean, some people were just giddy that they had that runway. So uh, I, and that's what they do with children's books. You know, the, the art directors, I, I believe, have very little involvement in uh, how something's being portrayed. The editor has major sway, as they should, because they're expert storytellers. They see it all the time, and they're thinking of the, the mechanics of how things work. And um, like, well, why are you, this is just an example, yeah. why are you putting in you know this scene where it's in it's already in the text this is redundant you know is there another way to think about it it's like oh gosh I didn't even I didn't even see that so uh, uh, being being open to what the editors have to say I think is a really important part of every artist's growth because they just see things with different eyes and as you know, that's that's the best um, analysis you can get from anybody. And artists will point out, you know, art things, but editors are thinking storytelling. I am um, going to come back to this because we read Oak Leaf, which I'm holding it up. Oak Leaf is John Sanford's first author illustrator book, right? This was your first uh, one? I said, I've no. done, a, um, I think, seven or eight. Before. Oh, before this oh, one. Okay. This was not yeah. your debut. Oh, my. Well, this is the one I met you at <laughs> <laughs> in your journey. And when you said right now the it would be redundant to put it in the words and then in, um, oh, my goodness, and then in the illustration again. It's just when you said it right now, I, I because we read your book right before coming here, this one, and, I, and we are going to talk about your new book. The leaf is falling and... Nowhere do you mention that this little girl is about to catch it, but it is the most important part of this book, but nowhere <laughs> yeah. in the words that are mentioned is just in the illustration. You're talking about what the leaf is doing, it's fluttering, is going around, but the illustration is telling you everything else, and it's exactly what you're saying right now. Yeah, it's it's it also works with, uh, well, you're the viewer, you're the kid reading this thing, and uh, there's a lot of, you know, back and forth with the uh, who they're reading it with, with the parents and a lot of questions. And uh, I, I know you, you know all that. And it's, uh, it's an important uh, part of this machine of uh, read, reading the book. It's not just one person, it's, it's more. And yeah. uh, you wanna be involved. It takes three, right? The editor, the, the, the illustrator and the reader. To yeah. put the story together, I I <laughs> totally. Um, let we we do have some. Qu oh, I open another window in front of your faces. Hold on, <laughs> oh, I'm patting you went away. I have your book here. Um, we do want to talk about your your beautiful book, um, Brindle Fox. I'm gonna pull it up here on the side. I wish I had it, but I don't have it yet. It's not out yet. Do you? This is uh when they printed up a few samples for the marketing team. They sent me uh, that. So at least I have it dimensionally and I've had it, uh, uh, my wife has a, a little uh, book stand 
and it's in the kitchen. So every time I go oh, by, I look oh. at it and um, and getting used to it in this form uh, because it was just uh, you know paint for so long. Right. And, yeah. uh, uh, anyway, there is a ton to ask you about this book. First, of I all, love the I love yeah. the title. I love the way you <laughs> drew the title. It's so it's it's beautiful. Uh, thank you. It, um, they um, they requested that, and I I don't I don't uh, I haven't done that very often. And, oh. uh, pa painting wood's kind of fun though, and uh, oh yeah. Uh, but uh, we went through several designs where uh, involving the tree. One of them had a smaller tree with brindle fox as part of the tree going on. Oh, yeah. And, and I was uh, uh, I could see that pushing for that. But I think that in the end, this was this is a lot larger and more dynamic than the other, and the leaves um, made a silhouette that I wasn't really conscious of as I was doing it and then it's a lot stronger here on the cover or I have forgotten <laughs> you know since I did it so. uh, well for those listening let, we'll just describe it really briefly yeah. it's um so the we said the book title named Brindle Fox but the title is um drawn as branches and wood and leaves and it's yeah, and it's really beautiful. And then Brindle Fox is the main character on the cover, and then he has a tree. Oh, is oh, it's a tree growing out of his back, right? Yes. Yeah, and that's the basically the story. It's really it's it's very interesting. Hey, it happens. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's life. What inspired your story? Well, um, at the very, I. I took a lot of things from growing up and some of the people in my family. And um, there's nothing literal here. It's just, uh, but there's there's influence there. And I had made notes for, uh, I think about a year, just loose notes. And, uh, and finally sat down late on a Friday night and, and thinking, I, I've got to, put down more so I had you know little yellow sticky notes and um as I as I get an idea I'd start you know racking them up on the the arm of the couch and then another row <laughs> and then and then thinking okay I I really got to go to bed so but maybe before I do I'll take these you know into the computer and they're just simple notes, so I'll, so I'll write them up so that sometimes I can't read my own writing and it's <laughs> better on the computer. So I put those notes down and, you know, the, the funny thing was, this is the thing that surprised me most was that the way that I put them, transcribed the notes was also very simple. It didn't change a whole lot from what's in the book. Oh, wow. like where and now I I understand where I get into trouble is when I get into thinking, uh, you know, flourishes, you know, <laughs> becoming a writer, you know, and if I keep it simple and keep within myself, it's going to read, it's going to read better. And certainly this did. And it sounded in the end more like a fairy tale than if I sat down to formally write it, you know, as a fairy tale. Um, yeah. So it, I think it it has a, a, a bit of a, a little bit raw, um, but also some things kind of like the, the redundant images, you don't have to say too much. And uh, keep keeping it simple as, um, you know, think of, uh, Think of the audience. Think of the guy writing. You know, it's got to be, you know, very simple. It so, has yeah. it has a feel of a classic, and we thought um, we thought is it was a this folk a retail of a folktale, and then so we looked it up, and we're like, no, it's not. But it has a feel of a classic fairy tale. But you have those little nuggets of your humor that that I'm familiar with, like 
for example, when they cut the pie with a miter saw, yeah. it was completely <laughs> unnecessary. <laughs> that was wonderful. I'm glad you know what a miter saw is. And that's, that makes my day. The, the then, miter, I'm sorry, the, the miter saw great. that's shown in there uh -huh. is, uh, my, was my father-in-law's. Oh. And it dates back well into pretty early in the last century. Uh, he was an old time uh, cabinet maker. And oh. um, and I, I see this uh, piece of metal as a, a beautiful piece of art. Uh, so anyway, that's I, how. That's how you incorporate it. <laughs> yeah. And then you have it there in the illustrations with the be with the <laughs> with the berries all dirty because they yeah. used it. So those yeah. details. <laughs> And I I love the part also where he's where the fox is combing just, with the hedgehog. He's combing okay. his part. That's wonderful. Thank so, you. Little tongue in cheek uh, humor bits and pieces are. I are think beautiful. that's what brings it a little bit has like a modern taste to it. Yeah. So it's a fairy tale, but it has the humor that that mm -hmm. I think we kind of appreciate nowadays. <laughs> I also pretty. I love the the simplicity of the story but um the also love that the main character he even though he's gruff and he seems um like he i mean i don't want to give away too much of the story but he doesn't he's not he doesn't want to let anyone in but the way to get to him was through his stomach which is <laughs> <laughs> which is so fitting because i feel like that food is like usually the way to get to most people it's a great <laughs> Great door opener. Yeah, <laughs> and and then the, the bird is going like, oh, it's friendship because I like pie. Yeah, yeah he's just yeah. like, I always like pie. It's like, <laughs> I'm a simple me, guy. I like bring pie. Bring me pie, I'll be your friend. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. Um, we, the illustrations are, are just breathtaking, but so are yeah. in every book that, that you have done. And you work traditionally, right? Is there oil paints? Uh, in, that's right. Wow, and, it, yeah. that's incredible. Yeah. That's I, I keep playing with surfaces, trying to get, um, you know, textures and different effects. And this was a real heavy watercolor paper that was colored from the beginning. I, uh, there's a place in um, Indiana uh, outside of Lafayette that makes handmade paper. They're called Twin Rocker uh, Handmade Paper. And... Uh -huh. If you go on there, it's a it's a website that should be updated because this looks like it's from the onset of the of the internet, and um, so it's kind of difficult to navigate. But they have some wonderful paper in different weights, all different weights and uh, textures and colors, and it's really fun. Um, so I uh, that's oil paint on a kind of a buff or tan uh, color that they call, they call it Patriot. And um, it, uh, it really soaked up the oil too. Uh, um, I, I do coat the paper with a, like a gel medium, okay. which is, uh, it's matte, so it's porous, so everything binds together. And, um, but still it, uh, it, would, it would dry and go matte like kind of kind of dead uh, and uh, I'd have to uh, add a little bit of medium to make it not so dead flat but um, uh, anyway it's uh, it's part of the you know the play of uh, your medium you know whether it's on the computer or in real life you you sink into these things and you know, start fiddling and everybody does it. This is the shop talk we we're talking yes, about. Yes, I, I love that. And every every book, I mean, that's the fun of, uh, you know, trying to fit something to to the story, hopefully make something different because I've, I've done a, a few things that are in the, like in a technique that were the same and it wasn't fun the second time around, you know. Um, uh, but, uh, but it's all in, in what, what we're trying to figure out in telling the story. Um, in, in talking to friends, they, uh, who 
who aren't artists, but they they talk about creativity. And I and I said that well, it seems to me that creativity is uh, solving problems. And some of the most creative people I know uh, are in you know whole different businesses. Like one guy's a lawyer. And he's just amazing the answers he comes up with. Uh, and, uh, you know, everybody in doing their job, there's a lot of creativity going on. And uh, maybe it gets attached to the arts uh, because it's, you know, a different, something different than what they do. But um, I'm constantly amazed at what people come up with. My, my daughter and son-in-law are both industrial designers and they oh, the things that problems. they come up with it, it's a it's like watching a service the things that they, they can do that's incredible yeah that's solving problems i love that that what did I say? That my the creativity is the mother of invention, or something. Necessity is the mother of invention. That's it. Okay. So you have to solve a problem and you figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, did so. This technique was new for this book. You decided to go with something completely new, just for like I need something different. Had you tried anything? What? I guess my question would be. Did you come up with this technique first or did you say, okay, now I'm going to illustrate the book. Let me see what I try. Well, you know, the first, the color piece that I sent along uh, with my pencil was actually in watercolor. Uh -huh. And um, I think it looks very similar, but I felt that I needed some opaques there. So I got prepared to take on gouache, which I... I have very little experience with, and it's a very tricky thing. And uh, I I lost some time in the project, and I thought I cannot, I can't, uh, I need to go with something I can depend on. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to learn on the job as the time is getting like that. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I I went to oil, and uh, and I could depend on that, and. Uh, the the look of it, at least to me, uh, feels different in that it's it's done uh, more simply than I did, like say with oak leaf. Um, so that there are more flat shapes, and I'd like to explore that more. Um, and in that way, it becomes more like gouache, let's say. Um, the, the way people treat gouache. But with oils, I also had the opportunity to work on the edges, which uh, sometimes you just need a soft edge. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's a, that's another you know, uh, another thing I like to, to fiddle with, whether it's giving distance or, or how light hits something to have a soft edges. That's a, that's a handy thing. I am looking mm -hmm. at what it is my favorite spread. And I and it's my favorite spread when I saw it in pencils and it's still my favorite spread now that it's in, um, in, uh, fully finished. And it's when the berries are coming off the tree. They're coming yeah. towards the viewer. You have all these <clears throat> cool colors coming. It's like opposite. You have the cool colors coming to the front mm -hmm. and all the warm colors in the back. It's so rich with color and the reflective light with that, that blue it's gorgeous. <laughs> that, oh, thank you. Those berries are beautiful. It, it's about the most animated yes. uh, things get. And um, um, and it was one that, that wasn't working. It just wasn't working until I put, I punched up those berries in the foreground. Then it's, then everything kind of snapped into shape. And because it was kind of weak before that, it really needs those berries. Um, yes. Yeah. Oh, you're holding yeah. it up beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. The berries add so much depth to the. And the, the reflective light on those berries, uh, to me, uh, is what does it. That blue on the left. Thank you for it's noticing gorgeous. that. That's. Uh, uh, you can get carried away with that yeah. stuff, but that was <laughs> that was seemed like the place. To use it, and um, 
uh, I was kind of anxious how this book would be printed because in in my mind it goes from like very subdued and even dark near the beginning and then as the heron enters light enters his life and uh, at the end I I'd like it to be you know really bright like you've opened the window yes and, it uh, comes through like that you, oh good you we can see that. it we, we actually noticed that your first end paper is is at yeah. night it is kind of sad and the the final end paper is like either morning or sunset but it is the colors are just so so beautiful right and beautiful. so happy yeah. oh good good yes. it um, totally came through did you see the little figures in that that in the end papers Look no, out. let me what? see what the little end. Okay, see. now mm. I gotta find them. I don't know because I you have them. a lot of hidden uh, things yeah. in here. We were looking in the briar and the in the leaves. I'm like, wait, there's a bird there. There's a, and it is <laughs> yeah. painted in a way that you don't see it on the first pass, but you see it on the second one, and you see. It. So this is a read many times type of book. Yeah, oh, there's good, a lot good. of hidden so, hidden nuggets. Now I gotta see <laughs> that. I'm gonna look for that. I don't see any characters in that on that and. Okay, I, 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 John, I can Art. see your brush strokes on that. It's just yeah. gorgeous. <laughs> the, there's two. I do see it. Okay. Are they by the river? Yes. Uh, sitting on, oh, the, on the river bank. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's so sweet. Oh, I now cried. I gotta go look at the first end When I got too. to the end of the book, uh, and the last line made, totally made me cry. I'm crying again. See, oh. I cry easily. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> it's so sweet. Um. But it's so fitting. Um, do you mind if I read the last line? Because oh, it's so please. sweet. Um, <laughs> to have a friend, one must be a friend. A full stomach helps and a full heart helps more. It's like, oh my gosh, this is so true. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thanks for reading that. Too. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a beautiful book. It's lovely. Brindle Fox is a Thanks. beautiful book. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to go back to shop talk just because you yeah. mentioned something that when you thought um, this is what you have, you have this oil painting in front of you and, and you want the colors to come through. So what was the process? Did you scan your own, uh, your own paintings or you sent the originals to be scanned? I scanned them. And it was, uh, I, I have a scanner from uh, uh, Cricket Media. Like they closed their offices mm -hmm. and oh. um, uh, nobody had uh, claimed the scanner. And it's uh, one of those large format Epsons. And um, that has, uh, that's, that's been pretty good. Um, I'm, I'm hoping to um, uh, photograph things uh, to, to pick up even more of the texture in the future. And um, I think, uh, well, we'll see how that goes. Uh, what, what size are your originals? I, I don't know if you said that. Also, I love your copyright information. I don't know if you did the, you wrote that, but it, the, I've never seen it done that way. And I love it the way it's, the way you wrote about the book and your materials used in <laughs> how many areas. <laughs> I like to. I like to have uh, to ask for acknowledgments to to um, to thank people, and uh, it's everybody from my eye doctor to, oh. to Francis, <laughs> and uh, um, yeah. um, and and then I I included I included all these notes that the editor who wrote the, all this um, uh, could use, in, including the. The stuff with the um, the paper towels and uh, all that because I get done with a with something and need a fresh paper towel and I just uh, put put these old ones in a stack and you know they don't look too bad themselves as you know weird little brush strokey uh, things all the colors together and uh, anyway. Uh, uh, Let's see what I'm sorry to ask this, but the original question as oh, I, yeah, oh the sorry, size the, of the original. Oh, I asked, yeah, what was your original art size? I believe uh, they were uh, 22 inch wide. Uh, and I would take it out within, um, let's see, I take the 
image with a quarter inch bleed and put it out to be uh, about, uh, let me see, I think it was within a quarter inch or a half an inch of each edge. And I had plenty of room top and bottom on those. Um, and the way that I did it was to um, take the pencils that I did, that I sent for the original presentation and uh, they were in Photoshop, so I could uh, blow them up. And I, I actually took the paper, this colored heavyweight watercolor paper, and fed it through the printer. Oh, oh it went through. Um, oh, wow. Okay. It's, it's a Canon um, 1000. It's 17 inches wide. So it, it took the paper easy. And I and I printed the um, the the images like uh, screen back so that they were just very light, like a light pencil line uh, when they printed up. But they had the hash marks and everything from the um, uh, from the layout, so that they were I I could uh, depend on those being precise. Uh, and if I for years, uh, Francis would trace down my pencils full size and oh, really oh get goodness. the detail right. She's had, uh, you know, hand problems and it's a very hard on her or, or anyone to, yeah. to do this. And um, I've, I've, uh, I've tried, uh, uh, you know, paying people to do it and they couldn't, they couldn't do half of, half as well as Francis did. So there's not anyway, enough pie. There's not enough pie to <laughs> oh, <laughs> sure. we have to keep our hands in good shape for pie. Yeah. <laughs> That's because your illustrations are so intricate. I cannot imagine well what what ends up being actual your line of pencil and then what you just put on top as pay as paint and it's just like okay, you know, lose. I I would definitely lose my line. <laughs> I couldn't That's it, yeah. That, so that can be a problem with something, uh, uh, but for me, it's like architectural things get wobbly and uh, I'm constantly needing to correct. There is something I had to say about, and, that, and this is something I, I see often, like architectural, you know, when it's, they're so rigid, they come across as like they're missing heart. Your architecture, I'm looking at the at the original house, it stands, the structure is beautiful, but it still has a softness and the wobbly, you know, you that I, I'm sometimes I'm like, okay, make sure that some heart comes through. I mean, we this is not an <laughs> this doesn't have to be so technical that it becomes cold. So I love our, that ability to be able to do architecture without losing the 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 feeling in, in this house. You see it and there's there's feeling in that house instead of just <laughs> would. Oh, great. Thank you. Yeah, so that's I love the go away I, sign. Pardon? I love, I love oh, the, the sign. The go away sign is wonderful. <laughs> it, uh, I think we all feel that way sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I I know that that are you all traditional or have you embraced a little bit of digital other than scanning um in your, in your technique? Oh, um, I I leave the door open depending on what the story is, and um, like like say for Brindle Fox, I, I really wanted it to be you know as old school as I could. And um, another book I did another technique um, that was uh, pretty pretty different, um, but. You know, depending on the story, it, it may demand computer. And uh, I did uh, one book as a, like a woodcut or an engraving. It was, it was black and white. Um, and uh, what I was trying to do was uh, like the early 19th or uh, the early uh, 20th century like going back to like 1910, there was a, a movement, the craftsman movement, and they they made books that that were designed, like they would design the type 
and the shape of the type on the on the page, and um, but then their their printing mechanisms were pretty, you know, not like we have today. So there'd be a lot of black and white or two color things, and uh, that was my inspiration for this book that was about a. Um, the, the terrible hodag, a mythical animal in northern Wisconsin that had the tail of an alligator, the, the head of an ox, and the, the body of a bear. And, um, and I did it as a, like, basically a scratch board, you know, remember the scratch board uh, things we did in school, except in Photoshop, if you, if you scratch a line, uh, and it's it isn't any good. You just you know yeah. do, uh, <laughs> command Z, command Z <laughs> until you get it right. Yeah. If you did that in real life uh, on Scratchboard, you would be down to paper, you know, and hitting pulp. Yeah. And um, it's you know the Photoshop is endlessly uh, you know, correcting. Yeah. Uh, so that was using the brush that goes thin and thick in uh, Photoshop and um, so I I love doing that but it that hurt my eyes too I what I should have done was dim down the black so mm. it would be so I I get really uh, I'd lose my focus yeah uh, quicker and quicker every day but I I love I love digital and the uh, the prospects are enormous and um, uh, you know that's a uh, more more fun and more tools for, for this uh, this party. <laughs> more tools, I like that. Yeah, like a lot of people think, oh, digital is easier. It's a, it's just a tool. If you cannot draw with a pencil, you can't draw with a computer, or you can't draw. You know, it's just it's just a, a tool. But uh, I'm I'm looking at uh, I every time I see someone do a traditional, I miss doing traditional, but I could not possibly imagine being able to do it now. I don't have the patience for it. Oh. And that and do, which is fast. But I do have to say, it has eaten my eyes. Oh. Uh these past I've been do, doing the iPad. I met you since I met you that I had just gotten my iPad then. Uh-huh. Um, and my eyes have gotten so bad. Because I'm constantly, I'm putting eight hours on this thing. And, and I'm like, I got to shut, you know, like I, there's a huge cost to using digital that yeah. I've noticed. Well, I, I haven't heard anyone else uh, uh, say that before. And I, I just thought it was my, you know, you know, when you tear up from uh, just staring at it too much. And I know you're supposed to get up and walk away, but, you know, but you who does that? <laughs> complete this thing <laughs> yeah who does that of course they tell you you're supposed to look away like in the distance for you know every 20 minutes but in reality who does that unless you put a timer because once you get into it yeah. i'm assuming that once you're painting someone has to come and tap you on the shoulder and go hey john it's been like eight hours <laughs> or something <laughs> there's pie in the kitchen come on <laughs> <laughs> well, that would do it that it has to, right? <laughs> Once you get into it, it's just, I, I, we artists, we get transported into another world and it's just, it's a fun world to live in. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's a good place to be in. Um, I want to ask you the, the, the question that I ask everyone. Um, this is my, my favorite question when we get to the, this part of the podcast that is just like, what advice would you give someone starting out or what, what do you wish somebody would have told you when you were starting out? Mm. Well, I I have to. I'm sorry. Everything has a story, you know. Oh no, please! Oh, no. I love stories. Don't apologize. Yeah. I, I had done uh, a handful of books. Maybe I think. Uh, well, I forget what it was at that time, but um, but I I told an editor that you know, or that I I have some ideas, and she said, "Okay, well, show them to me." And, uh, and by chance that summer, there was a SCBWI um, meeting at uh, Loyola University in Chicago that I attended. And the editor was there and one of her uh, author illustrators uh, from Wisconsin. 
and I'll I'll remember her name in just a, a second. But um, uh, but the editor's asking me questions about the thing, and I'm, you know, describing what's going on and what I need to do, and uh, and I I believe you know looking at it now that I was dithering, you know, I was, you know, and uh, the uh, the author illustrator said like. This is when smoking was more uh, acceptable. She yeah. took a long drag on her cigarette and she said, John, just do it. Just do it. <laughs> this is, you know, years before Nike used that. And yeah. it's like, it, it really what it was was a good, um, a good uh, slap that I needed. And it's like, yeah, I can, you know, you can dither over things all you want. You can, you can, you know, it's, it's not right. It's not right. But like for a story, uh, an editor needs to do their thing. So it doesn't have to be perfect. They will correct the language. They will help you with ideas. Uh, that's, that's a really, I, I can't emphasize how much uh, an editor brings to the party. It's not just correcting language and spelling. It's it's about the idea and really making something a book. But if there's potential there, you know, they're, they want it to happen too. And if you get uh, significant feedback from them, it's good to listen. And um, I think that, that's a really big thing. For, for people just starting out um, and... I know it's it's uh, it's always a difficult or hard or impossible to listen to, but it's you can make mistakes, make mistakes, and um, you know there's all sorts of mistakes that you can make uh, as you approach things. But you, the thing is, that's that's how you really learn is. Uh, if someone points it out, or if you realize it yourself, you have to have the the strength uh, to uh, to fix it too. Um, and it's best if you if you can take a fresh, hard look at at something and see what isn't working, um, because uh, then then you then you've got to uh, have a little session with yourself. Uh, you know, I've already put in so much time. I, I think I'll leave it. Or, you know, I better do it now. I better fix it now before I get too much further. And um, I think what that does is it makes it easier to make a change the next time. And there's going to be a lot of changes. You know, yeah. Everybody makes changes and everybody makes mistakes. So it's, uh, that's just part of the process. And uh, that's, it's not fun, but it's part of it. <laughs> so just do it. Take a chance. Yeah, yeah. Don't just yeah, leave it. Was... And be willing to make mistakes and fix them. Yeah, yeah. I like that. that. That's the nice. toughest part. And <laughs> it's, it, you know, when you're doing a drawing, you're thinking it's going okay. And you realize, well, this happens quite a bit. Like if, if I'm drawing on the couch with a with something in my lap, really the thing is at an angle. Yeah. And so I'm drawing, it looks pretty good, you know, but wait a minute. It's all <laughs> it's all wonky. So uh it's time to start over. Oh, I I think sometimes, at least for me, this is like when I draw something and it didn't quite come out the right. I it, I used to have this little head that I have been able to finally squish and squash and say just be quiet and and, and keep try again. It was like I won't be able to draw it better than this. Like this is as good as it gets. Yeah. So I don't want to fix it because if I erase this, I might not be able to get it even as to the point that I had it now. There's that fear of not being able to do to do better. But yeah, even with the editing of of books, I have noticed that. Oh gosh, it can be better. There are more ideas in there. Just keep digging, and there is more. 
<laughs> and, it, and every editor brings a different viewpoint, different way of communicating. Uh, to, I remember in one com in the conference where I met you, you you said you have to give something for the editor to do. Like they have to do <laughs> something. So it's okay, just do it. Just get it done. Get your ideas out there. Yeah, I just I just flashed on the name of the illustrator. If you ever run across her work, that's Lorna Balian. And that's B A L I E N. Uh and uh, she did uh really neat little book uh that um uh, then i need to go look for i only got a couple we looked at all your books oh my gosh john do you have so many <laughs> yeah a few of them are out of print a few are still quite a few are still in print and we noticed your style changed through the years and it's just i don't know like i I hope everyone look up John Sanford. You have to look up John Sanford Illustrator because there's some John Sanford uh, author. But also your website is doesn't say John Sanford. It's oh, sanfordarchive.com. Yes, that really got me confused. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but I found you better through, uh, easier through Instagram. And then on Instagram, you're Mr. Sanford, I think. Oh, yeah. Yes. And then, then I found your website, but we'll include your website link in the show right. notes also, yes. of course, and the book. Uh, and Oh, thank you. Yeah. John, when does your book come out? Uh, August 22nd. Almost right before my birthday. I'm going to buy myself a book for my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Almost August 22nd, uh, Brindle Fox by John Sanford. Yes. Love it's it. like a modern day fairy tale i think oh that's Great. a good way of putting it modern day fairy tale thank you that's yeah, uh... lovely <laughs> and uh, i i think i'm gonna uh, finish this by saying because of the message of your book make friends don't let a tree grow on your back <laughs> <laughs> make friends because this is what you need in this industry it it only takes 15 seconds it only takes yeah 15 seconds. <laughs> That is so true. 15 seconds to say hello to someone and you never know yeah. what comes out of that, that moment. So, well, thank you, Sunny. And thank you, Olga. Thank you it so was, much for being here this morning. This was lovely. I love talking shop with you. I really oh, do. <laughs> any old time. That's, uh, I, that, that's uh, you know, I, I learn as much as anybody. And, uh, you know, seeing everybody on their iPads, it's, you know, I'm, oh, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm, you know, Photoshop is, is great, but seeing what people are doing in uh, Procreate, that's, that's okay. pretty cool. A $10, yeah. a $10 uh, program. It's just like, how? That's a gift. That's wow. amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> this is, have you? Do you plan to jump into the iPad and give it a try? Um, you know, I uh, I would love to. I, I my computer that I'm viewing here is uh, eleven years old, and I have an order in uh, to pick up uh, one of the new um, Macs, just because I'd have to um, stop three or four times a day when RAM ran out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, luckily, uh, Photoshop is better at saving. Uh, you know, when things crash, it saves it. And uh, it used to be, that was it. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. pretty good now. That's uh, pretty good. You got 11 years out of it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, I think I'll, I'll have a lot more... Um, that I can do on uh, on the new maps, and uh, I look forward to that. And that'll that'll be a bit of a party, but I'd love to see what um, what I could do in Procreate on uh, on the iPad because that's that's yeah. that's pretty wild stuff. It is. I call it the magical box. I just it was <laughs> it's incredible just to be able to go out in front of a tree out in the park and sit there 
and actually paint like you would, you know, with your sketches, with your, with a sketchbook or something. But now you can have a digital one is saved and you can do all these kinds of neat things to it. And you can zoom in so you can make, you know, oh, that's yes. the nice part oh, about you can make eyes. things big, <laughs> which I don't. Yeah, I, I feel like it, sh we, we, it shouldn't be hurting our eyes because we're able to enlarge the image so much oh. and work at third pair of glasses in the last two years so something's yeah. going on <laughs> just I think it's just because you're so you're spending such large chunks of time on yeah, it without taking take breaks because that's what ha might actually that happened to my daughter too her oh. eyes got really bad within a four-year oh. time period because she was just she wouldn't <laughs> she wasn't taking breaks why well the future. uh now, did I see penguins that you did? That's sunny. She did some I did some penguins. some penguins for summer folio. Yeah, that was beautiful. <laughs> oh, I love those colors. <laughs> oh, right? Her colors were really cute on that one. It's just, yeah. it, it, it just happened. It's like, like I love to see the progression. And she just <laughs> like, I'm going to say this. It's that Sunny used to be very shy with color, very afraid of it. I now have to see her jump in and actually I'm like trying. play with them. I'm like, oh, yes, it's fun. I'm trying to be more colorful. It's hard. That, that's great. All, all that influence is, is yeah. really something. So, yeah. Thanks yeah, so this is what we're doing. So no, because <laughs> I, and I learned it from someone else, and someone else. That's what this is all about. It's a cool community, but it just makes me happy to see the colors there. Um, yeah, we're running summer foil, folio, and it's just like because how hard is it to work on a portfolio when you're starting from scratch and it's like it's a piece of paper and you're like, well, what do I even draw? Yeah. So I, I put some prompts there, like with specific parameters, but still very open. So that at least it gives an idea of what to draw and what to put in a piece of paper just to get started. And so that's what what that the penguins were for. I think it, the first prompt was, and that's when the pirates. Well, it's for oh, pirates, have... yeah. <laughs> but I chose penguins because I knew I had no winter pieces in my portfolio. And I was like, okay, well, I know the pirates are going to be in a winter scene. <laughs> but it's great. It gave me that jumping off point and I can just steer it into whatever direction I know my portfolio needs. And so it's been, yeah, it's been really helpful. And John, oh, wow. we noticed you have a lot of foxes. Yes. You know, it's, a lot it, of your work. <laughs> lately it has been, it used yeah. to be that, um, like if I went back, that used to be a lot of bears. Oh, we okay. noticed, we did okay, notice, yeah. we picked yeah. out on that as well. And every bear that you see, is me oh. that's that's my representation uh and the the only one you see in brindle fox he's he's mostly annoyed uh, yeah. but the other ones are kind of glumping and uh they seem foolish and uh and it, it's a great you know i can i can turn to that one and uh, uh that one uh fits pretty good so uh but the fox um uh, uh the, those are you know the whole fox movement has come up in the last 10 years it seems there's a, a lot of fox books and um there's yeah. even on instagram there's real fox footage and you know people have foxes for pets and uh, I guess they're, they're yeah. really funny and uh I, I love seeing all that and uh I, I hope I uh, I hope there's uh, other critters uh, out there that I can make heroes. So uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I when we saw your book with the, I made two connections. I said it reminds me of the rough patch, which is a fox going uh -huh. to grief. It's a beautiful, beautiful book. But then in your colors, I can't pronounce this name, so Sunny will help me out. It's lit. Um, the way oh, that you da color light, David, David Litchfield. Yes, I might, I might be saying his name wrong too. That sounds right. I that think sounds it's right. He did. Um, oh, he's done a lot of books. Uh, I think he's Canadian. I could be wrong. But he colors light with so much. The bear and the piano. Book. That I picked um, that up in your book too. I was like, man, his light is so bright, and you can touch it. <laughs> it's so beautiful. So yes, yeah, so I see Fox for David. Uh, Litchfield, right? Yeah, yeah, L I T C H and then field. Oh. Yeah, he does a lot of, he uses light, uh, like 
a, I mean, beautiful lighting in all of his in all of his work. He has um. He did a book about the earth, or he illustrated a book, but I think he he has a series about the bear and the piano, uh, that's really fun. And then one of my other favorites is the giant. I think the boy and the giant, or the giant and the boy. Oh, Granddad's Secret Giant, and then I think the boy and the giant. Yeah, if you look him up, you'll probably notice that, like, I, I don't know, I've seen, like, your, the way you handle color and light, it's, it's, yeah. it's very similar, it's, it's just bright and beautiful, and it's like it dances on the page. <laughs> that helps tell the story, sure. too. Yeah. yeah, it's beautiful. Wow. Yeah. I think we are good. Uh, I That was a, a really nice <laughs> conversation, John. I am... And mainly to see you again is so lovely because I think it was the last time was at that library in the little tiny oh. laptop that someone had there. Well, and uh, you used to have the um, uh, the group together. Yes. And, um, I, I hope they're doing well. And uh, they're doing well. We I had to leave. Sunny was part of it too. Because yeah. it was just taking up every Saturday evening from our, and, and like I have my two kids are graduating, like one graduated that's going to college, the other one's graduating this year. Wow. And it was so much driving around and it was taking so much time away from family time. So I was like, yeah. I can't take every Saturday yeah. evening to do it and to do this. Saturdays plus, are hard. Yeah. Plus the book and then Illo Chad grew and, and one thing yeah. started to pile up. So I had to make some, some, choices with my time and i'm like okay i'm gonna leave the group but i uh yeah and i do miss it i have to say i do miss having a critique group to hang out with yeah. and talk ch shop um yeah good sunny and i get to talk every day we meet yeah we meet and talk but it's not the same when it's just two of us i mean it's still fun but so thank you so much for this this shop talk today yeah oh, thank, thank you, you. <laughs> it was good to meet you sunny Oh, it's wonderful meeting you. <laughs> and I'll be, I'll be looking for you guys uh, soon. When's your next uh, uh, podcast? Oh, well, I think I think uh, that we're gonna have an episode with Holly. Holly Hatam. Uh, I think I'm gonna say her last name wrong. Hatam. 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 Oh, she said it was Hatam. I say Hatam. Yeah. Yeah. Um. It right. the, the the third week of this month. So okay. yeah, then we had an know. interview with Julia Mills. Uh, there is one episode that is ours and then yours. I think these these are taking us all through the whole year uh, yeah. for Middle Chat. Great. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> yeah, we will frame you perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, you guys knew just what I was saying. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Right. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank so you, John. Fun. Have a Thanks. wonderful day. It's really lovely seeing you. Great Good to see you both. <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.